how you're all doing. What are we going up to this week? Well, first, I'd just like to thank you all for the helpful comments last week. A couple of you have said that the uh, VFRs from the 90s have a similar problem, and it's all down to the poor quality multi-plug connectors. And a couple of you have mentioned about the engine management light. Apparently, if you uh, unplug multi-connectors or change fuses, when you switch your ignition back on, your engine management light will stay on not to worry about it because after a few heat cycles I'm not really familiar with the with the phrase of uh, heat cycles I imagine it's that uh, you bring your bike up to temperature then switch it off bring your bike up to temperature then switch it off bring your bike up to temperature and switch it off and eventually the engine management light will go off and also somebody mentioned that on their bike they have put a copper plate behind the uh, rectifier to try and disperse the heat and also they put a couple of computer fans on there as well and quite a few of you have mentioned about putting clear grease on the uh, multi-plug connectors and I will be checking the uh, wattage on my headlight bulbs because they do seem pretty bright to me so yes, probably in the video after this one, I'll be removing the petrol tank, removing the headlight, and uh, checking the battery cables, and cleaning all the multi-plug connectors, and putting a bit of grease in them. But like I say, that's not in this video, that'll be in the next video. Yes, I'm really happy that it passed the MOT last week, and I was, uh, I was really impressed by the actual ride of the bike. Even though I didn't get above 30 miles an hour, you could tell by the long drawn out throttle response that this bike has got a lot of torque and I must say the bike did feel really good the suspension went over all the bumps nice and smoothly no knocks or rattles or bangs the acceleration was accelerating uh, the back brake at first was a bit dicky it didn't seem to uh, stop me very well so I did keep accelerating and uh, pressing the back brake to try and break it in and uh, eventually it did feel pretty good also I did mention that it sounded like a car exhaust blowing but the uh, exhaust does have a really nice sound and it's got a nice burble popping at the back when you disaccelerate yes so the steering felt spot on I didn't really uh, take it round any corners too fast because it was pretty wet so obviously the roads were a bit slippy all the gears worked nice and smoothly well happy with them and uh, well happy with the seat that was nice and comfortable and the uh, handlebar height was perfect and the bike is big but it didn't really feel that heavy so yes Tina the Triumph is perfectly splendid We've just got to get it so we can half trust it on a long journey. So now we've got the MOT, there is still lots more to do before the summer comes. Oh my god, in this video we will be fitting these the bolt meter, cigarette lighter and the uh, USB charger not bothered about the switch for the moment so let's get on with it okay so I'm thinking of putting three of them here on this side there is plenty of space to put two there and one there but I'm still thinking about whether I could put the uh, whether I should put one there so I could put the volt meter there USB there, cigarette lighter there. So anyway, let me have a think about that. I'll do a few more measurements and I'll put the camera back on. Okay, so I can't see any other place. I don't really want to put all three on there because it's going to look a bit shoved in up there. So I've decided I'm going to put the voltmeter in that piece down there. And the other two auxiliary sockets there and there. I've only got this cutter and that is a bit too big so I put a zip tie around it to pull it in a bit and hopefully that should be spot on just got to cut that bit off obviously so let's get on with it
Right then, I don't know if you can see, but that's in my line of sight. You can see that clearly. Just put a zip tie around those to pull those back a bit. As we could see. Very nicely. Perfect. One down, two to go. Right then, we've got all the uh, holes drilled. Now the wiring up part. I've connected an earth wire to this little bolt here. And I've connected this wire to the live on the battery, but that's not where I'm going to keep it. I'm just going to check that that is a good earth. So if we get to the end of the earth wire again, hold that red wire onto the uh, positive terminal, put this onto the negative. Yep, so we've got a good earth there. Now I've just got to find a dog permanent live. So these only come on when I put the ignition on. Okay then, so we found a switch wire. It's the green and red coming out of the uh, fuel gauge, I think. Not sure what's all going on there. Don't know if that's factory or it's uh, been put on later. But anyway, that's going down through the clocks coming out through here but I mean, I'll probably make that a bit shorter because it's a bit too long I reckon but this fuse is going to go there behind that little panel a couple of these wire holders which I'll just stick one there and then you just put a uh, zip tie through the split there and put the other one up there and the fuse will be held nicely just there. So if it does blow then all I've got to do is two screws and take this indicator bracket off. So now I'm going to daisy chain the other end of the fuse from the volt meter gauge which will be down there and then to the uh, USB socket what will be there and then up to the cigar lighter which is Okay, so that's it, all the accessories in. This we've got the uh, inline fuse, stuck behind where the indicator bracket goes. Pop that back on there to make sure it's waterproof. And then we've got the uh, wiring. There is one meter right down there, what we can't quite see a light on it you might be able to see it just in the background there one down there one there and one there do they work um uh, and the earth earth going to there uh, positive going to a red and green wire there what happens when we switch the ignition on Twelve volts. Little red light there to show us charging. Uh, we haven't got no light on that. Let me get my sat nav and plug it in there see if it works. Found it. Stick that up there somewhere. Get a plug. Whack it in there. Does the plug light up? Oh yes. Does the sat nav come on? Oh no. Why is the sat nav not coming on? Oh, it is on, it's lit up. Aha! Nav man! Here we go! Lovely, lovely! Oh, there we go, all working. Gone down to 11.7 now. I think I might need a new battery.
Right, let's get rid of this hole and put the uh, heated grips switch back in. Just slots in. Nice and easy, he says. Well, won't that go in? That's it. There we go. I didn't think it was going to go in then. That looks a bit neater. Like I say, this will all be hidden with the uh, with the front fairings back on, and we put this back on. That'll all be nicely hidden. But I'm not going to put that on yet, obviously, because there's still things I've got to do for the next video. So there you go, you've just watched JT Moto. If you enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It's all free. And leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Whichever takes your fancy. And on that note, I see you in another life, brother. And remember, if you didn't vote for this Prime Minister, then who the hell did? <laughs>